prophet is the image that its maker should carve it. Molded image. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this afternoon's presentation. And we are going to continue with the importance of studying prophecy. But is a Jerry Dugno Dada, my corruption, Katakama Funzo, Leo, or Bottom Badaku, which is Funzo Minua, Nabi. And we shall begin with the silent word of prayer. Tanzana, Mombia, Kimamu. Amen. Amen. So, um, in the last presentation, we were looking at the importance of studying prophecy. And in this presentation, we are going to continue to look at the same. So, what we learned in the last presentation about prophecy is that that prophecy is a delineation of events that it's a figurative delineation of events that leads to this earth, to the close of this earth's history. So prophecy are figurative events on a line. Line. And these events are um, or are delineated on a line or are or are drawn out on a line. Na haya matukio ya mechoro katika line. So this what we saw from that is that prophecy always has to be taught in lines. Na tunajifunza kuwa unabi unapaswa kufunzwa because it's a delineation of events. And another thing we saw about prophecy is that it's the gospel. And that also prophecy is Christ in verity. That prophecy is what proves God to be the true God. And we concluded the presentation by showing that prophecy is what, is what established the faith of Peter. Because in 1 Peter um, chapter 1 verse 16, which reads 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 16, it reads, Kukua, kwa, katika kitabu cha Petero wa pili, that we have also a more sure word of prophecy where until you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. And we say that it is prophecy that makes Christ to arise in our hearts. And we say that it is prophecy that so um, this afternoon I want us to continue with this thought that prophecy is what establishes the faith of us as Seventh-day Adventists. Imani yetu kama Adventista. And that all throughout history it is always the prophetic word that has established the faith of God's people. Na kuwa katika historia yote nzima ni unabii ambayo imeza kuwa ikithibitisha imani ya watu wa Mungu. So um, this again will go contrary to what is being taught out there that prophecy is just about faith about numbers and dates. We shall begin to see that prophecy is actually the foundation of our faith. 
Unaanza kupenza kuona kuwa unabii ndio chanzo au nguzo wa imani yetu. And what we call righteousness by faith. Na kile ambacho tuna tunakita kuwa au tunasema kuwa kusabiu haki kwa imani. It's not about some goody goody feeling. Sio tu kujisi vyema, but righteousness by faith is believing in the prophetic word. Lakini kusabiu haki kwa imani ni ku kukiamini au kuliamini neno la unabii lilo la hakika so i want us to look at prophecy as the foundation of faith for us righteousness by faith ingetaka ama tungependa tuangalie unabii kama nguzo ya imani yetu so we begin to read from acts of the apostles page 124 paragraph 3 tunaanza kusoma kutoka kitabu cha royo nabii cha matendo ya mitume and it reads as paul preached christ in damascus All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? And came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? Paul declared that this change of faith had not been prompted by impulse or fanatism, but had been brought about by overwhelming evidence. In his presentation of the gospel, he sought to make plain the prophecies relating to the first advent of Christ. He showed conclusively that these prophecies had been literally fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The foundation of his faith was the sure word of prophecy. Nuku inasema kuwa kama Paulo alivyohubiri Kristo huko Damasko, wote waliomsikiliza walishangaa na kusema, huyu si yeye aliyewangamiza wote walioliita jina hili kule Yerusalemu na alikuja hapa kwa kwa nia hiyo ili awalete ikiwa mifungwa kwa makuhani wakuu. Paulo alitangaza kuwa mabadiliko yake ya imani hayakusababishwa na msisimko au ushabiki walakini uliletwa na ushahidi mkubwa mno katika mawasilisho yake ya injili aliyaweka wazi unabii zilizohusiana na kuja kwa Kristo mara ya kwanza alionyesha kikamilifu kuwa unabii hizi zilikuwa zimepata utimilifu wao wa halisi kwake Yesu wa Nazareti msingi wa imani yake ulikuwa neno la uhakika wa unabii so just like peter said that his sure uh, that uh, what established his faith was the sure word of prophecy kama vile peter petero alivyo sema kuwa unabii ndio ile ilikuwa nguzu nguzo wa imani yake we see also here paul saying that the foundation of his faith was the sure word of prophecy tuna pia paulo anasema katika nuku hii kuwa msingi wa imani yake ni neno la la uhakika wa unabii so we shall begin to see that it is prophecy that has always established the faith of god's people tutaanza kuona kuwa ni unabii ndio ambayo imekuwa iki kikikuwa kama nguzo ya imani kwa watu wa Mungu and without the understanding of prophecy you don't have faith na pasipo kuelewa unabii hauna imani so um, another quote we read after uh, this is the great controversy 88 349 paragraph 1 it reads after his resurrection jesus appeared to his disciples on the way to emmaus and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself The hearts of the disciples were stirred, faith was kindled. They were begotten again unto a lively hope, even before Jesus revealed himself to them. It was his purpose to enlighten their understanding and to fasten their faith upon the sure word of prophecy. He wished the truth to make firm root in their minds, not me- not merely because it was supported by his personal testimony, but because of the unquestionable evidence presented by the symbols and shadows of the typical law and the prophecies of the old testament it was needful for the followers of Christ to have an intelligent faith not only in their own behalf but that they might carry the knowledge of Christ to the world and as the very first step in imparting this knowledge Jesus directed the disciples to Moses and the prophets such was the testimony given by the savior to the value and importance of the old testament scriptures nasoma katika kitabu cha great controversy uh, kurasa 349 aya kwanza linasema hivi baada ya ufufuo wake Yesu aliwaonekania wanafunzi wake njiani kwenda Emau na kuanzia kwa Musa na manabii wote aliwaelezea katika maandiko yote vitu vilivyomhusu yeye mioyo ya wanafunzi yalisumbuliwa imani iliwaka walikuwa wazaliwa tena kwa tumaini lenye kupendeza hata kabla Yesu kujidhihirisha kwao ili hata kabla Yesu kujidhihirisha kwao ilikuwa ni kwa kusudi hili ili kuwafa, ili kufahamisha uelewa wao 
na kuweka imani yao kwa neno la uhakika wa unabii alitaka ukweli uchukue mzizi imara katika akili zao sio tu kwa sababu ulikuwa umeunga umeungwa mkono na ushuhuda wake wa kibinafsi walakini kwa sababu ya ushahidi usiotiwa shaka na uliowasilishwa na ishara ishara ya kimfano na kwa, na kwa unabii za agano la kale ilikuwa la msingi kwa wanafunzi wa Kristo kuwa na imani iliyo imara sio tu kwa niaba kwa niaba yao wenyewe bali waweze kulipeleka elimu ya Kristo ulimwenguni na kama hatua ya kwanza ya kutoa elimu hii Yesu aliwaelekeza kwa Musa na manabii hivyo ndivyo ilivyokuwa hivyo ndivyo ilivyokuwa ushuhuda iliyopeanwa na mkombozi aliyefufuka kuhusu tamani na umuhimu wa maandiko ya agano la kale so when Jesus was resurrected vio basi Kristo alipofufuka um and he came to his disciples na kawajia wanafunzi wake of course they were afraid because they thought he was a ghost walikuwa na hofu kwamba ndani kuwa yeye si mtu halisi but Christ um in order to prove that he was the very Christ who was with them lakini Kristo kwa kudhibitisha kuwa ni yeye aliyekuwa nao hapo awali the very first thing he did was not that he did he performed a miracle jambo la kwanza ambalo alilitenda si kwamba alifanya mujiza but what he did is that beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself lakini jambo alilofanya la, la kwanza ni kwamba ali kuanza katika samahani na kuanzia mwisho nasema kuwa jambo la kwanza ambalo alilofanya ni kuwa na kuanzia kwa Musa na manabii wote aliwaelezea katika maandiko yote vitu vilivyomhusu yeye so the very first thing that Christ did was he took his disciples through a prophetic study Jambo la kwanza ambalo Kristo alitenda ni kuwa aliwaelekeza wanafunzi wake katika historia ya kinabii. And by taking them through this prophetic study he was showing them that he was the Christ. Na kuelekeza katika historia ya kinabii hii alikuwa akiwaelezea kuwa yeye ndiye Kristo. So what Christ did was that um, he showed from Moses and all the prophets that all that was written in by the prophets was actually about him kile ambacho Kristo aliweza kuonyesha wanafunzi wake ni kuwa kuanzia katika Musa na manabii wote walikuwa wamezungumzia vitu kumhusu yeye so this again emphasizes the point that the whole prophecy is Christ hili linaleta kusisitiza kuwa unabii wote ni kuhusu Kristo yeah, and it goes on to say that he wanted this the prophecies or by taking them through this prophetic study ni la kusema kuwa alitaka kuonyesha kuwa kwa kuendeleza katika historia ya kinabii he was establishing their faith alikuwa akidhibitisha imani yao he wanted their faith to be established in the prophetic word alitaka imani yao iweze kuwa na nguvu katika neno la kinabii we continue to read just till about the same history in acts of the apostles page 27 For 40 days Christ remained on the earth preparing the disciples for the work before them and explaining that which he had to for they had been unable to comprehend he spoke of the prophecies concerning his advent his rejection by the jews and his death showing that every specification of these prophecies had been fulfilled he told them that they were to regard this fulfillment of prophecy as assurance of the power that would attend them in their future labors then opened he their understanding we read that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and he added ye are witnesses of these things during these days that Christ spent with his disciples they gained a new experience as they had their beloved master explaining the scriptures in the light of all that had happened their faith in him was fully established they reached the place where they could say i know whom i have believed nukuu katika kitabu ya nabii kinasema kuwa kwa siku 40 yesu alibaki duniani akiwatayarisha wafuasi wake kwa kazi iliyokuwa mbele yao na kuwafunulia ile ambayo hapo awali walishindwa kukielewa Alinena juu ya unabii zilizo husu kuja kwake kukataliwa kwake na Wayahudi na kifo chake akionyesha kuwa kila kauli ya unabii hizi yalikuwa yametimizwa 
aliwaambia kuwa wangepaswa wangepaswa kuyazingatia utimilifu huu wa unabii kama uhakika wa uweza wake kuwa kama uhakika wa uweza wake kuwa uwepo wake utakuwa nao katika kazi zao za siku za usoni kisha akafumbua uelewa wao tunasoma ili wapate kuyaelewa maandiko akawambia hivyo basi imeandikwa na ili na hivyo ilimpasa Kristo kuteseka na kutuf, kufufuka kutoka wafu siku ya tatu na kwa, na kwa toba na, na, msama, na msamaha wa dhambi lazima uhubiriwe kwa jina lake miongoni mwa mataifa yote kuanzia Yerusalemu na akaongeza nini ni mashahidi wa vitu hivi wakati wa siku hizo ambapo Kristo wakati wa siku hizi ambapo Kristo alikuwa na wanafunzi wake walipata uzoefu mpya kama walivomsikia bwana wao mpendo akiwafunulia maandiko akizingatia yale yote ambayo yalikuwa yametendeka imani yao kwake ilikuwa imara kabisa walifikia pahala ambapo wangesema najua nani nini so we read here that um, when Christ took his disciples through this prophetic study for the 40 days they gained an entirely new experience tunasoma hapa kuwa wakati ambapo Kristo alichukua wanafunzi ama aliwelekeza wanafunzi wake katika historia ya kinabii walipata uzoefu mwingine tofauti sana au mpya so it is prophecy that brings about this new experience ni unabii ambao pekee inaweza kuleta uzoevu huu mpya au tofauti. Um in another quote by Sister White she says um when the books of Daniel and Revelation are understood then the church will gain an entirely new religious experience. Katika nuku nyingine Dada White anasema kuwa uh, when the books of Daniel and Revelation are understood wakati mapo vitabu vya Daniel na Yohana Daniel na Yohana vitaeleweka then Adventists will gain a new religious experience wa Adventist watapata uzoefu mpya au effort kabisa so i want us to see that it is prophecy that brings about this new experience and the new experience is Christ arising in our hearts and nikataka tuone kuwa ni unabii pekee ambao unaleta uzoefu huu mpya na uzoefu huu mpya ni Kristo it is only prophecy that establishes the right kind of faith ni unabii pekee ambayo unathibitisha imani iliyo ya kweli the faith that cannot be shaken imani ambayo iwezi kutingisika because there is a kind of faith that can be shaken kwa sababu kuna hiyo imani ambayo yaweza kutingisika so we need to have the right kind of faith and the right kind of faith is the faith that the disciples had and all the prophets had na tubidi tuwe na imani iliyo ya kweli kwa kuwa imani ya kweli ndio wafuasi wa Kristo waliokuwa nao na hata manabii walikuwa nao so we are going to begin to look at how all other prophets had their faith established by prophecy tunaanza kuangalia tunaenda kuangalia vile ambavyo manabii wote walikuwa walisababu walithibitisha imani yao kulingana na unabii so we read from acts of the apostles 534 paragraph 3 Tunasoma katika Reo Nabii Acts of the Apostle Kurasa leo sema yet convincing as was this evidence of the certainty of the believers hope there was another still more convincing in the witness of prophecy to which the faith of all might be confirmed and securely anchored we have also peter declared a more sure word of prophecy where unto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts knowing this fast that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man but holy men of god spake as they were moved by the holy ghost nuku inasema japo kushawishi kama ilivyokuwa ushahidi huu ya uhakika wa tumaini la waumini kulikuwa na nyingine bado zaidi yenye ushawishi katika ushahidi wa unabii ambalo kupitia kwayo imani ya wote yaweza kudhibitishwa na kuwekwa salama imara tunao pia petero alitangaza neno la uhakika wa nabii kwamba ninyi mfanye vyema na kutilia maanani kama ilivyo mwanga uangazao mahali pagiza mpaka asubuhi na nyota ya asubuhi kuzuka mioni mwenu mkijua hili kwanza kwamba hakuna unabii ya maandiko ambayo ni ya kutafsiriwa kutafsiriwa kibinafsi kwa kuwa unabii haukuja wakati wa kale kwa mapenzi ya wanadamu walakini watakatifu wa Mungu walinena kama walivyoongozwa na roho wa Mungu 
So this teaches us that the faith of the disciples was established by the sure word of prophecy. Hii inatufunza kuwa imani ya wafuasi wa Kristo ulikuwa na nguzo lake katika unabii. And what about the other prophets in Bible of the Bible? We read about Daniel and in CC page 256 Council of the Churches Baden in behalf of Israel Daniel studied and knew the prophecies of Jeremiah they were very plain so plain that he understood by these testimonies recorded in books the number of the years were off the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem with faith founded on the sure word of prophecy Daniel pleaded with the Lord for the speedy fulfillment of these promises tumeona kuwa wafuasi wa Kristo walikuwa na unabii kama nguzo ya imani yao je manabii wa kale walikuwa na unabii kama nguzo ya imani yao tunasoma katika kitabu cha Dada White cha Council of Churches ah uh, ukurasa 256 tunasema alipokumbwa na wasiwasi kwa niaba ya Israeli Danieli aliudurusu upya unabii za Yeremia zilikuwa wazi wazi sana hadi akaelewa kupitia kwa kupitia kwa ushuhuda hizi zilizoandikwa katika vitabu katika vitabu idadi ya miaka ambayo neno la Mungu lilimjia nabii Yeremia kwamba angetimiza miaka sabini kwa ukiwa wa Yerusalemu kwa imani iliyojengwa kwa neno la uhakika wa unabii Danieli aliomba Mungu kwa ut, kwa utimisho wa haraka wa ha, ahadi hizi yeah, so we see that the faith of Daniel was also established by the sure word of prophecy na kuwa imani ya Danieli ilikuwa imejengwa katika nguzo ya unabii He studied the books of Jeremiah and all the other prophets and Ali and he based his faith on this prophetic word. In Christian service page 111 paragraph 2 we read As we see the fulfillment of prophecy our faith in the final triumph and in the final triumph of Christ's kingdom should strengthen and we should go forth with renewed courage to do our appointed work Christian Christian service Katika kitabu cha na tutaenda mbele na ujasiri upya kufanya kazi tuliyoteuliwa so how prophecy establishes the faith is by or how it does so is hivi basi jinsi ambavyo unabii unadhibitisha au linadhibiti imani yetu ni kwa when we see a prophecy being fulfilled tunapoona unabii umetimia then this uh, makes us to have faith in the word of god kinatufanya tuwe na imani katika neno la Mungu When we see different events being fulfilled just as they had been predicted tunapoona tukio nyinginezo zinatimika vile ambavyo vilitabiriwa this makes us to know that the person who wrote this word of god he na to sababisha kuwa tujue kwamba aliandika maneno haya ya Mungu is the past is the same person who orchestrates events in this world ndiye ambaye anaongoza matukio yote katika dunia hii and therefore we can put our trust in him hivyo basi tunaweza kuweka imani yetu kwake because he has the ability to control states and kingdoms sababu iwapo yeye ana uwezo wa kuongoza falme na serikali then also he has um, the ability to control or to influence various aspects of our lives hivyo basi ana pia uwezo wa kuongoza uh, kuongoza mambo mengi katika maisha yetu so uh, prophecy is what makes us to really have a trust in god and believe in him unabii pekee ndio unaotusababisha kuwa na imani kwake mungu na tuweze kumwamini yeye therefore a person who doesn't study prophecy can never come to an understanding of who god is or how god works hivi basi yeye yote ambaye akisomi unabii hawezi kuelewa kuwa mungu ni nani au mjua Mungu wa kweli and for this reason he will not have enough faith or he will not have faith because he doesn't um, he doesn't understand how God works so kwa sababu hii hata kuwa na imani kwa kuwa haelewi jinsi ambavyo Mungu anafanya kazi yake yeah he might profess that he has faith and he has righteousness by faith anaweza kukiri kuwa 
ana, ana imani na anao imani ya kuhesabiwa haki bila kuhesabiwa haki kwa imani but when the tempest will come or when the great trial will burst upon god's people lakini jaribio kubwa litakapokuja katika kwa watu wa Mungu it will be seen that they do not have enough faith in god itaonekana kuwa hawana imani kutosha kwake ya Mungu and this is because they failed to see the fulfillment of prophetic events na hii ni kwa sababu wali hawakuweza kuona utimilifu wa nabii katika tukio za kihistoria if they had seen the fulfillment of these prophecies wangeaona utimilifu wa nabii hizi and understand that it's a fulfillment of prophecy na kuelewa kama utimilifu wa nabii then their faith in god will be established ndio basi imani yao kwake Mungu ingeweza kuwa imara so we continue to read ndio basi tunaendelea kusoma um, 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 another quote which says those who wish to believe okay um, Christ came to call the attention of all men to his father teaching them repentance toward God his work was to reconcile man to God although Christ did not come as he was expected yet he came just as prophecy had marked out that he would come those who wish to believe had sufficient foundation for their faith by referring to prophecy which predicted the coming of the just one and described the manner of his coming na soma nukui lasema kuwa Kristo alikuja kuamsha fahamu za watu wote kwake baba yake kuwafunza toba kwa Mungu kazi yake ya kupatanisha mwanadamu na Mungu kazi yake ya kupatanisha mwanadamu na Mungu ingawa Kristo hakuja alivyotarajiwa bado alikuja tu kama vile unabii ilivyosema atakuja wale waliotaka kuamini walikuwa na ushahidi tosha wa kuweka msingi wa imani yao kwa kurejelea unabii ambayo itabiri kuja kwake Yesu kuja kwake yeye aliye mwenye haki na kuelezea namna ya kuja kwake another quote says nuku nyingine ninasema if you desire salvation i entreat you or this is review and herald um, uh, january 10 1888 it says if you desire salvation i entreat you to shun his insinuations concerning the truth of god's word or maybe if i can just read the whole quote the fruits of doubt are not desirable oh look around you and see what havoc has been wrought by the machinations of the evil one error and falsehood and heresy have held high carnival in the deceived hearts of men from century to century the adversary has repeated his experiments with growing success for in spite of the sad records of lies that have gone out in darkness as moths fly to the fire so men rush on into the ruinous deceptions that he has prepared to entrap them and now it says if you desire salvation i entreat you to shun his insinuations concerning the truth of god's word come to the sure word of prophecy where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place if that is not authoritative what is if the word of the lord of heaven and earth is not solid rock upon which to build then it is in vain to look for a sure foundation heaven and earth shall pass away but the word of the lord endureth forever and unwavering faith is in his word is the only faith that will endure through the perils of these last days nasoma katika nikuhi nasema kuwa matunda ya shaka hayatamaniki haya tazama karibu nawe na uone uharibifu uliotekelezwa na hila zake yule mungu kosa na uongo na uasi vilivyofanya sherehe kubwa katika mioyo za wanadamu walio danganywa kutoka karne hadi karne adui amerudia majaribio yake kwa, mani, kwa mafanikio ya kukua kwa maana licha ya rekodi za kusis, kusikitisha za maisha zilizoendelea zilizoenda nje katika giza kama nondo warukao kwenda motoni ndivyo wanadamu wanavyoharakisha kwenda katika udanganyifu zenye uharibifu ambavyo ametayarisha ili kuwafunga iwapo watamani wakovu na kusihi uyaache mapendekezo yake kuhusu ukweli wa neno la Mungu njoo kwa neno la uhakika wa unabii kwamba ninyi mfanye vyema na kutilia maanani kama ilivyo mwonga unawangazao mahali pakiza ikiwa hiyo si mamlaka nini mamlaka basi iwapo neno iwapo neno la Mungu wa mbinguni na dunia sio imara kama mwamba ambayo juu tupaswa kujenga basi ni bure kutafuta msingi wa uhakika 
mbingu na dunia itapita lakini neno la Mungu litadumu milele na imani isiyo yumba yumba katika neno lake ndilo imani la pekee ambayo itadumu katika hatari za siku za mwisho so it says if you desire salvation ile basi inasema iwapo unatamania wokovu come to the sure word of prophecy kuje katika neno la kika la wanabii and then also it says and unwavering faith in his word or in the prophetic word in the mutual word of prophecy is the only faith that will endure through the perils of the last days inasema 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 tena kuwa mm. lakini uh, na imani isiyo yumba yumba katika neno lake ndilo imani la pekee ambayo itadumu katika hatari za siku za mwisho so we see the faith that will stand in the last days is the faith that is founded in the prophetic word tunakuwa imani ambayo itasimama katika siku za mwisho ni imani ambayo unaoongozwa katika neno ya nabii every other faith will just be found to be a dross or a tinsel of imani yote imani yote ile ambayo haija haija gemea unabii kama nguzo ya imani itapatikana kuwa ni ni bure ni ya just a gap ni la kabara ni ku ni ku ni kujibalisha tu si la kweli yeah but the true faith is the righteousness by faith is believing in the prophetic word lakini imani ya kweli kusabiwa haki kwa imani ni kuamini ni kuamini Kristo we are told that Abraham is the father of faith tunaambiwa kwamba Abraham ndiye baba imani and in Genesis we are told that and Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness na katika kitabu cha mwanzo tunaambiwa kwamba Abraham alimwamini Ibrahim alimwamini Mungu na ikasabiwa kwake kama kama imani but what did he believe about what what did he believe he believed in the prophetic word he believed that a son would be given him je aliamini nini aliamini katika neno la la nabii aliamini kuwa mwana atapewa mwana katika siku za usoni believing in this prophetic word of god was counted unto him for righteousness kuamini katika neno hili la kinabii la mungu lilifanywa ama lilisabiwa alipoamini katika neno hili la nabii la mungu alisabiwa kuwa haki So that is righteousness by faith. Tabi basi hivyo tu hiyo tu ndio kusabiwa haki kwa imani. Believing in the prophetic word. Kuamini kwa neno la wanabii. We read again in another quote Evangelism page 197. Ministers should present the sure word of prophecy as the foundation of faith of Seventh Day Adventists. The prophecies of Daniel and the Revelation should be carefully studied and in connection with them the words behold the lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Nasoma katika nukuu ya David nasema kuwa wahubiri lazima wawasilishe neno la uhakika wa nabii kama msingi wa imani ya Adventista. Unabize Daniel na Funuo lazima zidurusiwe kwa makini na kuunganishwa na maneno tazama mwana kondoa Mungu ambaye anayondoa dhambi ya ulimwengu. So Seventh Day Adventists have no other foundation of faith. Hivi basi wa Adventist hawana nguzo nyingine ya imani. We are told ministers should present the sure word of prophecy as the foundation of the faith of Seventh Day Adventists. Tunaambiwa kwa waubiri lazima wasilishe neno la uhakika wa nabii kama msingi wa imani wa Adventist. So ministers should present no other message if it's not the sure word of prophecy. Ni basi wahubiri hawapasi kujuku hawapasi kuhubiri ujumbe wote ile pasipokuwa ni neno la unabii. Um, so we continue to read let us give more time to the study of the Bible. And the book of Revelation op- we do not understand the word as we should. The book of Revelation opens with an injunction to us to understand the instruction that it contains. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. God declares and God declares and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. When we as a people understand what this book means to us there will be seen among us among us a great revival. Nasoma katika nuku hii nasema kuwa hebu tutoe wakati zaidi kwa kukidirusu Biblia. Hatuelewi maneno jinsi tupasavyo kitabu cha funuo kinafungua na mwelekezo kwa kuelewa mafundisho ambayo yanapatikana humo ndani abarikiwe yeye asomaye na wale wasikiao maneno ya nabii hii atangaza Mungu na kuyashika vile vitu ambavyo vimeandikwa humo kwa kuwa wakati umewadia wakati sisi wakati ambapo sisi kama watu tutakapoelewa 
nini hiki kitabu kinamaanisha kwetu kutoonekana miongoni mwetu uhuisho mkubwa um, another quote reads when the books of daniel and revelation are better understood believers will have an entirely different religious experience this is the quote i was talking about earlier and then further down it says one thing will certainly be understood from the study of revelation that the connection between god and his people is close and decided this is um, flb 345 paragraph 3 Nuku hili ndio leo nilikuwa nikijadilia hapo wali nasema kuwa wakati vitabu vya Danieli na Funuo viteleweka vizuri waumini watakuwa na uzoefu mwingine wa kidini tofauti kabisa. So um now we are going to look at another um, principle about prophecy. Sivi sasa kwenda kumalia katika kumalia kanuni nyingine kuhusu nabii. And the principle we are, I want us to look at is that every story in the bible every narrative in the bible all all this all scripture is actually prophecy na kanuni hii inaenda kwa maana kwa kwa jinsi hii kwamba kila hadithi katika biblia kila tukio katika biblia ni la kinabii yeah and so this means that um all the transactions that we see in the old testament and all the transactions we see in the new testament are just but prophecies. We don't have um, some or we don't have just stories. They are actually prophecies. Ina na maana kuwa yale mambo yote ambayo tunaona katika agano la kale na agano jipya ni kwamba yote ni nabii. So Genesis, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Numbers up to uh, Malachi, all the prophets are just speaking about the end of the world. Na kwanza katika mwanzo kutoka kumbukumbu la Torati hadi Malaki zinaongelea kuhusu and we get this principle from Acts of the Apostles page 585 paragraph 1 which, which reads in the revelation all the books of the bible meet and end so in the book of revelation you have all the prophecies meeting ufunuo unapata kuwa vitabu vyote vya Biblia vinakutana pale so this means that revelation is just but a summary hivi basi ufunuo ni muhtasari tu wa vitabu vyote vya Biblia of prophecies that had already been given in the other books of the bible via muhtasari wa nabii ambavyo vilipeano katika vitabu vya Biblia and that it is just in revelation where all these prophecies now meet and end or are summarized and it took katika kitabu cha ufunuo ambapo vitabu hivi vyote vina vinakutana na ku na kutamatishwa na kutamatishwa so um another quote to emphasize on that point says the whole bible is a revelation for all revelation to human beings comes through christ and all centers in him god has spoken unto us by his son whose we are by creation and by redemption Christ came to John exiled on the Isle of Patmos to give him the truth for these last days to show him that which must shortly come to pass Jesus Christ is the great trustee of divine revelation it is through him that we have a knowledge of what we are to look for in the closing scenes of this earth's history Tunasoma katika niku hii kuwa Biblia yote ni ufunuo kwa kuwa ufunuo wote wa wanadamu kuja kupitia Kristo na vitu vyote ndani yake Mungu amezungumza kwetu sisi kupitia mwanawe ambaye sisi ni wake kwa uumbaji na ukombozi. Kristo alimjia Yohana alipo Kristo alimjia Yohana alipohamishwa katika kisiwa cha Patmos ili kumpa ukweli wa wakati huu wa mwisho, kumuonyesha yeye yale ambayo kwa muda mfupi yatatukia. Yesu Kristo ndiye mtunzaji mkuu wa ufunuo wa Mungu. Ni kupitia kwake ndio tunao elimu ya yale ambayo tunapaswa kuangalia katika matukio ya mwisho ya historia ya dunia hii. So every story in the Bible, every psalm, every proverb, every parable, every vision is a prophecy about the end of the world. Ye basi kila hadithi katika Biblia, kila metali, kila fumbo na kila zaburi ni una, ni unabii ambayo unatimia katika siku hizi za mwisho. And when we begin now to get into these studies we are going to look how, we are going to see how the whole bible is just but a prophecy. Na tutakapoanza kuna katika somo hili tunakuwa 
Biblia yote ni unabii. So um, just to emphasize on that principle, ili kusikiza kanuni hii. Um so um prophecies um we read that there are types and that there are figures. That prophecy is a delineation of figures on a line. Tumesema kuwa unabii ni mfano au aina na unabii ni kutora tukio katika tukiuliza kimfano katika line. But another name for types and figures and shadows it's parables. Na neno lingine kisawe na aina na mfano ni kuwa mafumbo. So parables are just types. Mafumbo ni aina ama au mifano and types are prophecies. Na aina au mifano ni unabii. So the parables that were given or the parables that we read in the bible are just but prophecies about the end of the world. Hivyo basi mafumbo yote ambayo tunayosoma katika biblia ni unabii kuhusu dunia yangu. But it is not only the parables that are called parables but every scripture is a parable. Na sio tu kuwa mafumbo haya pekee ndio yanaitwa mafumbo bali kila fungu katika biblia au kila neno katika biblia ni fungu because you are going to read that Christ always speaks to us in parables kwa kuwa tunataka kusema kuwa Kristo hazungumzi huzungumza nasi kupitia mafumbo therefore the word of god is a parable to us hivyo basi neno la Mungu ni fumbo kwetu sisi and that's why all these things are parables or are types and symbols and shadows and figures ndio kwa maana hivi vitu vyote katika chat hivi ni mafumbo na ishara na mifano so all these things are parables hivi basi hivi vitu vyote ni mafumbo because prophecy is parables kwa kuwa unabii ni mafumbo so we read in 3 sp paragraph of page 35 it reads through the parables which jesus spoke to the jews he brought their minds to prophecies which had foretold the very things which were then being enacted He sought by every means within his power to awaken their consciences and to enlighten their understanding that they might consider well the steps they were meditating. In these parables he laid the purposes of the Pharisees before them together with the fearful consequences consequences resulting. A solemn warning was thus given to them and to leave the matter without a shadow of doubt Jesus then dropped all figures and stated plainly that the kingdom of God should be taken from them and given to a nation bringing forth fruit nasoma katika mikuu hii kuwa kupitia mifano ambayo Yesu aliwaambia Wayahudi alileta mawazo zao ama yao kwa nabii ambazo zilikuwa zimenena mambo ambayo yalikuwa wakati huo ulikuwa unapitishwa alinuia kwa kila njia ndani ya uweza wake ili kuamsha fahamu zao na kufumbua uelewa wao ili waweze kufikiria vizuri hatua ambazo walizokuwa wakizitafakari katika mifano hizi aliweka lengo ya unabii mbeleni mwao pamoja na matokeo ya kutisha yatakayofuata onyo kali hivyo walipewa na hili jambo lisiwe na, na na ili hili jambo lisiwe na taswishi Yesu tena alielezea mifano yote na kusema waziwazi kuwa ufalme wa Mungu utatolewa toka kwao na kupewa taifa ambalo litatoa mazao so the code begins by saying through the parables which Jesus spoke to the Jews he brought their minds to prophecies which had foretold the very things nuku nasema kuwa kupitia mifano ambayo Yesu aliwaambia Wayahudi alileta mawazo zao kwa nabii ambazo zilikuwa zimenena mambo ambayo yalikuwa wakati wao wanatumia so how was Christ teaching what was going to come in the future je ni jinsi gani Kristo alikuwa akifunza mambo yatakayokuwa kuja katika siku za usoni it was by giving them parables si kwa kuwa mafumbo we continue to read in Matthew chapter 13 verse 34 to 35 all these things speak Jesus unto the multitude in parables and without a parable speak he not unto them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying i will open my mouth in parables i will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world nasoma katika kitabu cha Mathayo nasoma kuwa haya yote Yesu aliyowaambia halaiki kwa mitali au mafumbo na pasipo mitali au mafumbo hakuzungumza nao ili kwamba itimizwe yale ambayo yalinena na nabii akisema itafungua kinywa changu kwa mitali itatamka mambo ambayo yamewekwa siri kutoka msingi wa dunia we read in Matthew chapter 13 that Christ always spoke to the multitude in parables tumesoma katika kitabu cha Mathayo 13 kuwa Kristo alizungumza 
na halaiki kupitia mithali ya wa mafumbo and without a parable speaking not unto them na pasipo mafumbo au mithali kuzungumza nao jambo lolote therefore understanding that parables are also prophecies ile basi kuelewa kwa mafumbo au mithali pia ni unabii so it says that Christ always always spoke to the multitudes in prophecies na tuambia kuwa ama tunampara maana kuwa Kristo alizungumza na halaiki kupitia unabii or the message that always Christ gave to the multitudes was prophecy au ujumbe ambao Kristo alikuwa akipeana ilikuwa ni ujumbe wa kinabii and without prophecy he had no message for them na pasipo unabii hakuwa na ujumbe wote kwa without a parable speaking not unto them pasipo mafumbo au mithali hakuzungumza nao jambo lolote but it says that this parables was but by Christ speaking in parables he was fulfilling a scripture that and was foretold about him which says i will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world na kristo kuzungumza kongeo kristo kupitia mafumbo tunaambua kwamba alikuwa akitimiza unabii ambao ulisema kuwa mhm kwa kusema kuwa itatamka mambo ambayo yamekwa siri uh, samahani so um so by Christ teaching or by Christ um speaking in parables um kwa kri, kwa Kristo kuzungumza kupitia mafumbo he was also t- uh, okay he said that uh, by Christ teaching in parables he was fulfilling a prophecy concerning him Kristo kufunzwa kwa mafumbo alikuwa akitimiza unabii kumhusu yeye that when the Christ who would come he will teach in parables kwamba Kristo ambaye atakayekuja atafunzwa kupitia mafumbo and it was written about him that he will utter i will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world na ilizungumzwa kumhusu yeye kuwa so i will open my mouth in parables i will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world ah uh, kuwa nitafungo ilizimu ilinena kuhusu kumhusu yeye kuwa itafungua kinywa changu kwa mithali au mafumbo ndetamka mambo ambayo yamekuwa siri kutoka msingi wa dunia so what we glean from this is that the parables are also things that have been kept secret tunalo pata katika fungu hili likuwa unabii ni mafumbo ambayo parables are things that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world napata kuwa mafumbo mafumbo ni mambo ambayo yamekuwa siri kutoka msingi wa dunia so this teaches us that parables are also secrets ina tunza kuwa mafumbo pia ni mambo ya kisiri and what are the secrets or in the bible what is identified as secrets na je siri ni katika biblia amos 37 says surely the lord god will do nothing but he revealed his secret unto his servants the prophets na basi mnaandika amos 3:7 inasema kuwa hakika bwana mungu hatafanya neno lolote bila kuwafunulia watumishi wake manabii siri yake so the secrets are revealed to the prophets hivyo basi unabii siri inafunuliwa kwake watumishi wake so nabii the secrets are prophecies hivyo basi siri ni unabii because prophecies is what is revealed to the prophets kwa kuwa unabii ndio linafunuliwa kwa manabii but we saw that these secrets are also parables ukiona kuwa Mm, siri hizi pia ni mafumbo so this just emphasizes the point that parables are secrets which are prophecies hili linaendelea kusitiza kuwa mafumbo ni unabii so, au siri pia ni unabii yeah so um the when we go to psalm 78 verse 2 we find that uh, prophecy about christ i will open my mouth in a parable i will utter dark sayings of old na bwana katika kitabu cha zaburi 78 mbili nasema kuwa nitafungua kinywa changu kwa methali au mafumbo niyatamke mafumbo ya kale so the parables which are secrets are also dark sayings hivyo basi uh, mafumbo au methali pia ni vitu ambavyo ni za kimfuko ziki za, za kimafumbo giza So um what you understand is that parables are prophecies are dark sayings. Naelewa kuwa mithali ni mafumbo na pia ni maneno yaliyo yako katika siri. So these are the dark sayings. Seven heads, horns, beasts are strange looking beasts. These are dark sayings. Hivyo basi hivi vyote vyote vilivyo katika hii chart ndio mafumbo. So um but you see that these dark sayings are secrets that have been kept hidden from the foundation of the world. Kama mafumbo haya ni mambo ambayo yaliyo katika siri. So we read again in Psalms chapter 49 verse 4. Tunasoma tena katika kitabu cha Zaburi 49 49 aya 
My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. Nasoma kuwa ni kini wa changu kitanena hekima na fikiria za moyo wangu zitakuwa za busara. Itatega sikio langu nisikie metali na kufumbua fumbo langu kwa kinubi. So this just shows parable and also dark sayings. Naja kuwa metali pia ni kama fumbo. But now what are dark sayings? Naje ni nini mana ya mafumbo? Um, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 to 6. Kitabu cha metali suri ya kuanza aya 5 wadi 6. It says... A wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Inasema kuwa mwenye hikima atasikia na kuongezewa elimu na mwenye uelewa ayafikie mashauri yenye hikima. Kufahamu mtali na tafsiri maneno ya wenye hikima na mafumbo yao. In the book of First Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verse nineteen, we read. Katika kitabu cha Petero wa pili, mlango wa kuanza, au ya kumi na tisa pasoma. And the prophecies of no private interpretation. Kwa kuwa unabi sio sio ya kutafsiriwa kibinafsi. So what is interpreted is prophecy. We basi ilinalo tafsiriwa ni unabi. But here we see what is interpreted is at the dark saints. Na hapa katika kitabu cha mzee kuna kuwa ilinalo tafsiriwa ni maneno. It says to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Inasema kuelewa mafumbo na tafsiri lake, maneno ya wenye hekima na mafumbo yao. So proverbs, parables, dark sayings are all prophecies. Vyo basi mafumbo, mitali, zote ni yunabi. And Daniel chapter 12 verse 9 to 10 says, Kitabu cha Daniel ni Daniel chapter 12 verse 9 to 10 Daniel 12 aya 9 to 10 um, um, And just before we go there um, In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 to 6 It read To understand a proverb and the interpretation The words of the wise and their dark sayings Kabla kisome fungu ili Daniel Tulisoma kata kitabu cha metali kuwa Kufahamu mitali na tafsiri maneno ya wenye hekima na mafumbo yao. So the proverbs and the dark sayings are also the words of the wise. Ibyo basi mafumbo na mitali pia ni maneno ya wenye hekima. So prophecy is connected or is linked with the wise. Ibyo basi unabii kimunganishwa na wenye hekima. And there, then we go to Daniel 12, 9 to 10. It reads, and he said, go the way Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made right and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Tunasoma, Rektobu cha Danieli, kuminambili, aya, pisa de kumi, nasoma kuwa, akasema, enenda zako, Danieli, kwa mana, maneno haya mefungwa na kutiwa muhuri, hadi wakati wa mwisho. Wengi watatakasa, watatakasa, watatakaswa na kufanya weupe, na kujaribiwa. Bali wabaya watatenda mabaya Wala hawata elewa Hata elewa mtu, um, mtu, mtu mbaya awaya yote Wala hata elewa mtu mbaya awaya yote Bali wawa walio na hekima Ndiyo watakao elewa So the words that are closed up Can also be interpreted as secrets Sivyo basi maneno yaliyo fungwa na kutiwa muhuri Yanaza pia kurejelewa ama kulimenesha kwa maa Kama siri. And these secrets will be revealed at the time of the end. Na hizi siri zitafungulio katika wakati wa mwisho. In the coming studies we are going to identify where our time of the end is at. Kwa mafunzo ya takaya kuja tutaanza kutambua wakati wa mwisho wetu uko wabi. But what I want us to understand or to glean from this is that it is the wise or those people who understand um, this time of the end or the secrets that are revealed in the time of the end are the wise. Jambo ambao ni kipenda tuze kulelewa kuwa wale ambao wanafuhamu wakati huu wa mwisho au mambo haya ambao ya liwe kwa siri ni wale waliona hekima katika wakati wa mwisho. So um, the secrets are revealed unto the wise. Ivi basi siri inafungulua kuwa waliona hekima. And so it says the wise shall understand. And then another quote, it says, um, still to prove the point about the dark saints being prophecies. 
mafumbo ni nabii we go to numbers chapter 12 verse 5 to 9 na katika kitabu cha hesabu 12 aya 5 hadi 9 and it reads and the lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam and they both came forth and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet among you I the lord will make my, myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream my servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all my house with him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed Masoma kuwa katika kitabu cha Hesabu 12 aya 5 hadi 9 kasema kuwa na Bwana akashuka katika nguzo ya wingu akasimama pale mlangoni pa hema akawaita Harun na Miriam na wakatoka nje wote wawili kisha akawaambia sikizeni sasa maneno yangu iwapo kuna nabii kati yenu mimi bwana nitajifunua kwake katika maono nitasema naye katika ndoto zisi, zi, katika ndoto sivyo ilivyo kwa mtumishi wangu Musa yeye ni mwaminifu katika nyumba yangu yote kwake itanena mdomo kwa mdomo maana waziwazi wazi, wala si kwa mafumbo na umbo na umbo la bwana yeye ataliona Bona basi hamkugopa kumnenea mtumishi wangu huyo Musa hasita za Bwana zikawa zikawa zika, zika, zika juu yao naye akaenda zake so what we see here in numbers is that um, vision is also equated to dark speeches naona kuwa katika kitabu cha hesabu kuwa maono pia yana linganishwa sawa na mafumbo and visions are prophecies na maono ni unabii so the dark speeches or the dark sayings are prophecies hivyo basi mafumbo ni unabii so all these things are the dark sayings hivyo basi haya ambayo yote ndio mafumbo and what we read um in the previous verses is that Christ always speaks in these dark sayings na tulivyosoma hapo wali kuwa ni Kristo alikuwa akizungumza na watu kupitia mafumbo so by Christ speaking in parables it is teaching us that Christ always speaks to us through prophecy kwa Kristo kuzungumza kupitia mafumbo na tufunza kuwa Kristo anazungumza nasi kupitia unabii au mafumbo so this continues to emphasize the point that um, we really have no other message besides prophecy. Because Christ has no other message for us besides his, uh, but, but only parables. Without a parable he speak not unto them. Um, so as we are closing up as we are winding up so how um, how do we study now these prophecies because we have read that the prophecies are of no private interpretation tunapo nila kuji tunapo tunapo endelea ama tunapo karibia kutamatisha tunaweza kujifunza how to interpret these prophecies jinsi za kutafsiri unabii hizi or these dark sayings ama mafumbo haya because as we are read in proverb they need interpretation kwa kuwa tulivyosoma katika mithali kuwa zina vinahitaji tafsiriwa so how do you interpret bible prophecies jeni vipi tunaweza kutafsiri nabii za biblia so we read um, another quote this is review and herald november 25 1884 paragraph 25 tunasoma katika kitabu cha dawaita na licho kitaja it says those who are engaged in proclaiming the third angel's message are searching the scriptures upon the same plan that father miller adopted in the book entitled views of the prophecies and prophetic chronology Father Miller gives the following simple but intelligent and important rules for studying for Bible study and interpretation. 1. Every word must have its proper bearing on the subject presented in the Bible. 2. All scripture is necessary and may be understood by diligent application and study. 3. Nothing revealed in scripture can or will be hid from those who ask in faith not wavering. 4. To understand doctrine, bring all the scriptures together on the subject you wish to know, then let every word have its proper influence, and if you can form your theory without a contradiction, you cannot be in error. 5. Scripture must be its own expositor, since it is a rule of itself. If I depend on a teacher to expound it to expound to me, and he should guess at its meaning or desire to have it so on account of its sectarian creed or to be thought wise, then his guessing, desire, creed, or wisdom is my rule, and not the Bible. The above is a portion of these rules, and in our study of the Bible, we shall all do well to heed the principles set forth. 
ili kujua namna ambavyo naweza kutafsiri una Biblia tunasoma nukuhi ile ile tunasema kuwa wale ambao wanaohusika na kuhubiri ujumbe wa malaika watatu wanasoma maandiko katika mpango sawa na ile ambayo baba Mila aliyoikumbatia katika kitabu kidogo chenye kichwa mtazamo wa nabii na kronolojia wa nabii baba Mila anatoa kanuni zifuatazo za kutafsiri Biblia ambazo ni rahisi lakini za hekima na za maana kanuni ya kwanza kila neno lazima liwe na mwelekeo lazima liwe na mwelekeo katika somo linalo wasilishwa katika Biblia. Kanuni ya pili, maandiko yote yanafaa na yanaweza kueleweka kwa kutumiwa kwa bidii na kudurusu. Kanuni ya tatu, hakuna chochote kilichofunuliwa katika maandiko ambacho chaweza au kitaweza kufichwa kwa wale ambao watauliza kwa imani wasichoke. Kanuni ya nne, kuolewa mafundisho leta maandiko yote pamoja ambayo yanahusu somo unalotaka kujua kisha uiache kila neno liwe na ushawishi wake sahihi na ikiwa waweza fanya nadharia yako pasipo utata hauwezi kuwa katika hitilafu kanuni ya tano, maandiko lazima yajieleze yenyewe kwa kuwa ni kanuni kivi yake iwapo itamtegemea mwalimu kunielezea naye amdhania tu kuhusu maana ya maandiko au niwe na hamu ya kulijua kwa kauli yake mwenyewe au kufikiriwa kuwa nina hekima basi kudhania kwake au hamu au hekima ndio kanuni yangu wala si Biblia iliyoko hapo juu ni sehemu ya kanuni hizi na katika kudurusi kwetu kudurusi kwetu Biblia tutafanya vizuri tukizingatia kanuni hizi ambazo zimewekwa so um, from this our study we have understood that prophecy is figures or its types and shadows katika somo hili tumejifunza kuwa unabii ni mfano au kiaina and these types of figures are also secrets na mifano haya au aina hivi pia imekuwa siri they are secrets they are dark sayings they are parables ni siri ni mafumbo na pia ni mitali so we cannot just understand them at the first glance hatuwezi tu kuyatambua katika kusoma kule kwa kwanza so we need uh, principles or we need keys to unlock these secrets na need tuna tunahitaji kanuni au funguo vya kufungua mafumbo haya au siri hizi so um, and the keys that are given in god's word are the rules na funguo au kanuni zilizo pendo katika kitabu cha Mungu ni hizi kanuni ambazo tunaweza kuzisoma so it says um, sister white quotes only four of those rules but there are actually 14 of them quotes five sorry five Oh sorry sister white quotes only five of the rules but we, we know that there are 14 of these rules dadawait katika fungu ambayo tumesoma ananukuu kanuni hizi tano lakini tunajua kuwa kanuni hizi ni zote jumla 14 so these are the rules that we use to unlock the figures and the types and the shadows and all these things hizi ndizo kanuni ambazo sisi tunazitumia kufungua haya mafumbo yote na kuelewa hizi siri zote so um you can't just find um Um, a, a, a truth revealed in one portion of scripture one of the rules says you must bring all scripture together so that you may understand what a figure means or what a symbol represents hawezi kupata fundisho moja katika fungu moja ni kwamba unapaswa kuta mafungu yote katika biblia ili uweze kuelewa fundisho ile katika biblia so it becomes important for us as seventh day adventists to understand these rules because they are the ones that unlocks to us prophecy. Hivi basi inakuwa ya maana sana kwa tusi kama Adventista kuelewa kanuni hizi ili tuweze kufumbua au kuelewa siri hizi au mafumbo haya. William Miller used these rules to understand prophecy. William Miller alitumia kanuni hizi kuelewa nabii and we are told that those who will be proclaiming the third angel's message atumeambiwa kwamba wale ambao watakuwa kihubiri ujumbe wa malaika watatu are searching the scriptures upon the same plan that Father Miller adapted wanasoma maandiko katika mpangilio sawa na ile ambayo Father Miller aliyokuta aliyokubatia so the same methodology Miller used to study the bible hiyo basi mpango ule ule ambao Miller alitumia kusoma biblia is the same methodology that adventists are required to study the bible ndio mpango ambao adventists wanapaswa kutumia kusoma biblia so in conclusion what we have um, understood today is that prophecy is figures and types kwa kutamatisha yale ambayo tumeza kujifunza siku ya leo ni kuwa unabii ni mfano au aina 
and these types and these figures point us or show us the close of this art history na hizi mifano au aina hizi yanatuonyesha kufungwa kwa historia ya dunia hii we have also understood that all the narratives of the bible all stories of the bible tumelewa pia kuwa historia zote au hadithi za biblia every written word in the bible is a prophecy kila neno kila neno lolote liko katika biblia ni unabii and that all the books of the bible meet and end in the revelation na kuwa vitabu vyote vya biblia vinakutana na kuisha katika ufunuo so in our coming studies if you basic katika mafunzo yetu ya jana we shall begin to look at the historical events that show the end of the world tutaanza kuangalia historia history matukio za kihistoria ambayo zinaanisha kufungwa kwa historia ya ulimwengu we shall begin to see how god appointed the ancient people to show the things that will come at the end of the world tunaanza kuona kuwa jinsi ambavyo mungu alitua watu wa watu wa kale and we shall begin to see how types and figures are just um, shadows about what will happen at the end of the world tunaona kuwa mm, aina na mfano ni vinaelezea tu vile vitu ambavyo vitakuwa katika mwisho wa dunia and we shall see also how all these things point to Christ. Tuna pia jinsi ambavyo hivi vitu vyote vinaelezea kuhusu Kristo. So with that we come to the end of our presentation. Kwa hayo yote tunafika tamatisho la wasilisho letu and we shall close with the word of prayer. Na tutafunga kwa maombi. Our dear heavenly father we once again come before you in Jesus name. Baba yetu leo jibinguni mara nyingine tena tuje kwako kupita kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. And we thank you for what you have been able to cover for this time. Na tunakushukuru kwa yale kwa yale yote ambayo tumeweza kuyapita katika siku hii ya leo. We thank you father for this truth that you have revealed unto us. Tunakushukuru kwa ukweli hizi ambazo umeweza kutufunulia. And Lord we also pray for those who are hearing this truth for the first time. Na Bwana tunaombea wale wote ambao wanaosikiliza ukweli hizi kwa mara yao ya kwanza that it will be impressed in their hearts ili kwamba ziweze kuwa katika mioyo yao and that they will see the beauty and truth in it. Ili waweze kuona uzuri ulioko ndani yake. Thank you Father for making us the depositaries of these truths as Seventh Day Adventists. Asante Mungu kutufanya sisi tuwe warithi wa ukweli haya kama Adventista pray that you may give us the strength and the courage to look deeper into them tunakuomba uweze kutupa ujasiri kwa kwa kuviangalia kwa kina because by doing this our faith is established sababu kwa kufanya hivi vyote imani yetu inawekwa imara kwako wewe lord you understand that there is a tempest that is coming upon all adventists tunaelewa kuwa kuna jaribio ambalo linakuja katika au kwa adventista wote this is the great and final test hili ndio jaribio kuu na la mwisho and those who will not have the right kind of faith will fail at this test na wale wote ambao hawatakuwa na imani iliyo sawa hawata hawataweza kupita katika jaribio hili so lord we pray that you may give us the right faith that will stand during that time hivyo basi tunakuomba e mungu aweze kutupa imani iliyo sawa ili tuweze kusimama katika jaribio hilo and we thank you for revealing unto us that this faith comes through your prophetic word na tunakushukuru kwa kuwa umeweza kutufurilia kuwa imani hii inakuja tu kwa kusoma na la nabii. So give us the interest in your prophetic word as Adventists. Hivi basi tunakuomba uweze kutupa neema tuweze kukipenda neno lako la nabii. And above all send your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth. Na kwa hayo wote tunakuomba uweze kutuma roho kwa mtakatifu ili kaweze kutuongoza kwa kweli. We thank you Lord because you desire to fulfill these things more than we can ask or imagine. Tunakushukuru kwa kwa kuwa unatamani sana kutimiza hawa, kutimiza hivi vitu vyote pita vile hapo tunataka 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 kuzifikiria and also because we pray in Jesus name na pia kwa sababu tunaomba kwa jina la Mwana Yesu Kristo amen amina amen.